Hi guys, welcome back to Matt Chat. This is episode number 10, uh, which covers another of my greatest or favorite games of all time, and also one of the greatest. Uh, this time we look at a game called Lemmings, a game that debuted in 1991 for the Commodore Amiga platform. Uh, Lemmings was a terrific success. It sold millions of copies. It was uh, ported to all kinds of systems. Uh, there were sequels galore. Uh, it's still being played today. You can play it even in your web browser. There are versions uh, for modern platforms. Um, this was just a really uh, key game. Uh, it's very uh, original and you know, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, hopefully some of that I'll get across in the, the video. Uh, but I'll just tell you that as I was making this match chat, I was playing Lemmings on uh, my computer here. And uh, my wife comes by and she, you know, she, I think she sort of takes a you know, kind of pretends to be interested sometimes in the, the games I'm looking at. Uh, but this time, you know, she sat and watched me for a while, uh, saw what I was doing, and uh, next thing you know, she's, you know, tapping me. Uh, why don't you have that guy? Why don't you make him climb? You know, why don't, <laughs> why don't you do this? So they're already uh, very interested in this game. Next thing you know, I was actually uh, pushed out of my chair. Uh, she sits down and takes over my computer. I mean, this even though it's 1991, this game still has that much uh, power. Uh, somebody's never seen the game before, sees it, for a few minutes, and uh, they're already sucked into uh, sucked into the gameplay. It's just a very great game. Um, now, the company that designed it, uh, DMA Design, uh, you may or may not have heard of them. Uh, they they were known in 1991 for some of their earlier games, uh, most notably Blood Money and Menace. Uh, Blood Money was a fun two-player side-scrolling uh, shoot 'em up game. Later, though, after Lemmings, uh, they developed another series you may have heard of, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, eventually they were bought out by Rockstar and they became Rockstar North and they are responsible for the Grand Theft Auto, another of the uh, most best-selling games of all time. Uh, now, uh, before we play Lemmings, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Matt Barton. I am the author of Dungeons and Desktops, a book about computer role-playing games, and co-author of Vintage Games, uh, another book about game history. Uh, that one takes a broader perspective and talks about all kinds of influential games from, from all eras and for all platforms. If you like game history, if, you like a, if you're nostalgic for the good old days or, uh, and you want to see how uh, things developed into uh, modern games, uh, check out those books. And uh, I'd really appreciate it too if you would uh, drop me a line here at YouTube. You could comment on this video. Uh, you can rate it. Uh, just you know, do something to let me know that you care about these videos, that you want to see more. Uh, as much fun as it is to making these videos, it, it is a lot of time and, and, and actually money you know, that goes into them. So uh, anything you can do to let me know you appreciate it or that you uh, would like to see another video, um, drop me a line, drop me a comment, uh, do something, because uh, I really appreciate that. Okay then, uh, without further ado, let's play Lemmings. As you could probably tell from that introductory video, Lemmings is a, not a game that takes itself very seriously. It's a very lighthearted and comical game with lots of humor and uh, cartoony action. The gameplay consists of guiding my Lemmings from the trapdoor, usually at the top of the screen where they fall, to the exit, which you can see here at the bottom of the screen the location of the exit and the entrance changes from level to level. As you can see here, the uh, lemmings are walking along these platforms. If I don't designate some of them to block or to stop their progress, they'll just go right off the side of the 
of these ledges and, and fall to their deaths. So I have to designate some as blockers uh, to keep them uh, moving safely towards the exit. Since this is one of the early levels of the game, that's all I have to do, just set up some blockers. Uh, later levels, though, I may have to, to establish uh, five or six different jobs for my lemmings, maybe have some lemmings do multiple jobs, uh, so it quickly gets more complicated. Uh, but these early levels will sort of baby step you through the lemmings interface, and you can familiarize yourself with the sorts of puzzles and challenges uh, that lie ahead. I think this is a fun level here, uh, just because it at first looks very complicated and, and difficult, but <laughs> the trick is simply to select one of your lemmings to be block to block the rest, and all the other lemmings go straight to the exit. So it's a good example of the kind of uh, in-game humor uh, that you might encounter. Uh, <laughs> a level that looks at first very forbidding turns out to be very simple. Some of the levels, though, are much more difficult and can require very fast thinking or more likely to simply replaying the level several times. Uh, this level, for instance, um, almost immediately I notice my lemmings are dying, falling down this uh, cliff. So I have to think really quickly, how can I save my lemmings? Uh, one answer might be to give each one of them an umbrella. But if, there's, if I only have 20 umbrellas and more than 20 lemmings, I need an alternative plan. Uh, so you can see this level is going to require a lot more from me. I need to really think about how to protect my lemmings. One of the best parts of the game is just the fact that the levels are so diverse. Uh, they, a lot of the levels look very different. You never really know what to expect. You have to experiment with lots of different strategies. So it's a lot of replay value in this. Even if you manage to get through a level with the minimum percentage of lemmings, you might want to try it again to see if you can rescue a greater percentage or maybe just try a wackier strategy. This level requires me to build some bridges or my <laughs> lemmings will end up in the fire, which uh, might make them uncomfortable. I think about these builders, though, is that they'll only build for a little while, then they'll stop. So I have to keep my mouse right on him and stay very alert so that he won't plummet to his death before he's finished with his bridge. You've finally been enjoying this music that plays on each level, too. Some of the, one of the great things about this game is... Uh, the production values are so high. Um, every level has its own musical theme. It's very a lot of contagious and infectious grooves, if you will. Uh, definitely very impressive stuff in the early 90s. Uh, the Amiga had the benefit of four-channel stereo sound, uh, which games like this really took advantage of to give a good mix of sound effects and music. By this point in the game, you can see it's gotten quite more difficult. Now we have four trapdoors and lemmings going all over the place. And again, it looks very daunting, but usually the solutions to a level turn out to be simpler than you may think. This is not a game about brute force. It's more about strategic thinking. Finding a, a, the most simple, perhaps, and the most elegant solution to a problem. Uh, see here, for instance, I know I don't have enough umbrellas for all these lemmings, so what I want to do is make a ramp on this on the side here, so the lemmings won't far as fall, um, fall as far and can survive without the umbrella. One thing about this game that makes it compelling too is, you know, that you get you get attached to these guys, uh, these little lemmings. You feel responsible for their safety, and it can bother you when they die. You might feel guilty. I noticed uh, when my wife was playing this several times, expressed grief over. Or she'd say, sorry little guy, uh, <laughs> when she had to blow him up. Now, sometimes you have to have your, your lemmings commit suicide or blow themselves up. and uh, that, that can be sad, but unfortunately it's uh, for the greater good, right? <laughs> and that's all for this week's Mad Chat. See you next week.